Hello spicy people of the internet, my name is Spice 8 Rack, aka Tyler the Creator but taller and welcome to the first part in my War of the Spark series, the entire War of the Spark novel in a tight 15 minutes. But first, this video and all future videos on this channel are made possible thanks to the support of my wonderful patrons, uh, some of whom include uh, Sasha Evelyn Francis, Papa Titan 14, Dat Ass is Cash, lovely, and Stingray. Thank you all so much and to everybody else who supports me on Patreon. Right, let's get straight into it with Chapter 1. Ugin and Niv Mizzet, who is dead and in a shoebox, are hanging out on Bolas's meditation realm. We'll get to them later. Chapter 2. Some doofus called Teo gets caught up in a diamond storm on his two-sunned desert home plane of Amonke- I mean Rabia- I mean Gobakan. And when he sees some sparkling lights, he planeswalks for his first time and lands in... Chapter 3. Chandra is hanging out in her mum's kitchen with Jace, Gideon, Ajani, Jaya and Khan waiting for Liliana. She doesn't show up but their Uber's here so they all planes walk too. Chapter 4. Ral Zarek is on his planar beacon and wakes up Lavinia and Kaya because they both got knocked out during a fight with Nicol Bolas and Tezzeret, during which Nicol Bolas killed Niv Mizzet and Tezzeret mind controlled Lavinia into killing Rakdos' envoy, Hekara, who we have not met. Does that seem like a lot of information for one chapter? Well it is! And now we get to meet... Chapter 5. Liliana, as she watches Nicol Bolas and Tezzeret erect a massive Nicol Pillar and Bolas Pyramid, and then she mopes. Chapter 6. Ravnica is where Teo lands and is greeted by a girl called Rat, who talks a lot. Chapter 7. Ravnica is where Jace and the other Gatewatch affiliated folks turn up, specifically in Jace's library in the Embassy of the Guild Pact. Lavinia is there somehow, and brings everyone up to speed. Isperia? Dead. The Golgari? Fighting amongst themselves now that Vraska's disappeared. The Simic and Selesnia? Dug in. The Grohl? Led by Domri now. Rakdos? Pissed that Hakara's dead. The Azorius? Being run by Dovin. Orzov? Kaya's on side, but the guild is apathetic. Demir? Who knows? The Izzet and Boros? Solidly on side. Jace, overwhelmed by the exposition dump, goes mad and tells Gideon to planeswalk away. He tries, but then finds out that the Immortal Sun is on Ravnica, and somebody turned it on. Chapter 8. Gideon, concerned about Jace's mental health, follows him and Teferi into the streets of Ravnica under the cover of being invisible when some dickwad accidentally accesses Ravnica's dev room, which glitches a hole in the world and causes a bunch of zombies to come in from the Egyptian RP server a couple of doors down. Chapter 9. Dak Faden finally lands after accidentally opening his parachute straight after jumping off the battle bus and gets stuck on a rooftop. Chapter 10. Oh no! Chandra, Jaya, Khan and Ajani were all in the building that's now mostly Void Orb. Luckily they all survived. Thank god. The story almost had tension for a second there. Chapter 12, Jace is all like, Ah oh, no, NB, I challenge you to a live Twitch debate. But when he tries to destroy the dragon with facts and the guild pact, it turns out that that only works if the building that just got blown up doesn't get blown up. Dang, son, what a pickle! Chapter 13, Gideon watches in horror as Liliana shows up and begins using Bolas' eternal army to kill a bunch of people. Chapter 14, Liliana watches in horror as she kills a bunch of people, but then rationalizes it and continues to murder. Chapter 15, Kaya and Ral turn up to the plaza and kill some zombies where they meet Teo and Rat. Chapter 16, Ral, Kaya, Teo and Rat fight their way to the Gatewatch. Chapter 17, Vraska is hanging out with a goblin on a boat. Neat! Chapter 18. Liliana gets really sad that she's doing all of this killing. She then continues killing. Chapter 19. Teo tries to keep everyone shielded whilst he does his best to pick up everybody's names, bonds, classes, ideals, flaws, and what the heck a Zendikar is. Carl Ste- Khan Ste- <laughs> Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Carl the Silver Golem. Khan steals Rao's goggles, casts a spell, and now all of the important characters have a different coloured names above their heads. A bit like my patrons. Chapter 20. Dak Faden still can't find a way off the roof. Chapter 21. Gideon and Ajani fight alongside each other. Vivian turns up and she's like, Sup? And they're like, Sup? We need a DPS for this raid. And she's like, eh, sure. And they all get on flying horses as an anvil starts shooting lasers at the zombies. Chapter 22. Jaya tells Chandra her pyromancy is sloppy and her handwriting is abysmal when Vitu Ghazi stands up and is all like, Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Turns out though that Nissa is standing on top of Vitugazi and the whole thing is just one big social experiment. Chapter 23. Raoul looks for his boyfriend. 
Raoul does not find his boyfriend. Chapter 24 Kaya, Teo, and Rat try to sneak to Orzova, but get cornered by Eternals. Luckily for them, before Kaya wall clips away, Domri shows up and kills the zombies with some Grull warriors. One of them is Rat's dad, but he forgot to pay child support this month and so pretends he doesn't see her. Chapter 25 Nissa's prank gets way out of hand when Vitugazi destroys some private property, and its owner responds by calling his four lawyers, who proceed to rip the city tree's arms off. Gideon asks, Do you have another one? and Khan summons and then plays a swanny whistle. Chapter 26. Teo gets a rapid introduction into things like merfolk when Kiora and Samut show up to do some murdering. Domri see the zombie god show up and pile drive Treebeard and he's like, hell yeah, now it's a party, and jogs off to join Bolas. Rat's dad already has one kid to not look after, so he goes to hang out with Borborygmus. Chapter 27. Dak Faden watches Domri's negotiation with Bolas, which lasts for about three seconds and ends with Domri getting his spark ripped out and his body turned into a raisin. Chapter 28. Nicol Bolas gloats. Chapter 29. Kaya gets a notification on Jace's mental group chat and, before she mutes it, she sees a random Vyashinu get raisined in front of her. The most haunting of dried fruits. And decides to go hang out with David Blaine after all. Chapter 30. Jace is sad or some shit. <laughs> chapter 31. Ral does that recap thing that Lavinia did in Chapter 7, with the only changes being that Domri's dead and Varel has turned up to the meeting to rep the Simic. He asks Kaya if she's seen Tomic, but she hasn't. Ain't no place for twinks in the ghost realm. Chapter 32. Jace defends Vraska's straight up murder of Hysperia whilst he stands directly below her corpse and takes stock of what he's working with. Watley's here, as is Angrath who is sniffing Arlen. Mu and Jiang are fighting over who gets to be on a card in this set and everyone decides they like Mawu more than Mu. Narset is there and spelt wrong and Obnixilus and Nahiri are just chilling out despite, you know, being responsible for many murders. Jay sets out five side quests that must be completed before everyone can level up. Number one, the planar beacon must be shut down. Number two, the immortal sun needs to get turned off. Number three, somebody needs to shut that door. It's letting all the sand in. Number four, Liliana needs to be murdered. Number five, Bola should also get killed at some point. Ral butts in and says that all the guilds need to bring their infinity stones to his house, but nobody listens because there's a big weird snake outside. Chapter 33. Kaya takes Nyssa, Teo, and Rat to Selesnia lands, and after Rat puts in a good word with her centaur godfather, everyone except for Nyssa gets to talk to the tree women. Chapter 34. Gideon fannies about on his Pegasus and accidentally stabs Rahonas in the Renonosus. Nose he stabs him in the nose and he dies. Chapter 35. Oh, hey, Liliana's in this story. Chapter 36. Teo basks in the wonder of the green, whilst Emara tries to get everyone to leave before they wake up. Oh, no, look, now you've gone and done it. Tristani's awake and supports plan anti bolus. Great, great. It's going to be hours before she goes to sleep again. Cheers, Kaya. Chapter 37. Ral sucks a bunch of power out of his beacon and uses it to zap. Kefnet's arm off. You're no good, duck! Chapter 38. Kaya, Rat, and Teo meet Borborygmus in his fight club, and Rat's mother is there. Is there seriously no one looking after this kid? She's got like eight parents. She whispers some terrible secret into Borborygmus' ear, and the giant buckles onto the weight of her blackmail and joins the war. Chapter 39. In an act of boyish tomfoolery, Obnixilus kicks Dak Faden a little too hard, and he flies over the hedge, through the planar gate, and lands in old Mr. Bolas's deserty ass backyard. So Khan, Samut, and Ob sheepishly go around the back and ask if they can have their toy back. Chapter 40. Ral gets introduced to Rat, who has selective telepathy and invisibility, by the way. Don't worry, it's literally never important. And then they, along with Teo and Kaya, go to the Golgari lands when, shock horror, Raska shows up and she's got a knife! Chapter 41. Dak wakes up in Amonkhet and watches Samut blow up some zombies whilst Ob gets chonky. In order to feel useful too, he throws a hand grenade at a piece of modern art, but it turns out that was Tezzeret. The Seeker falls over, the portal closes, and he pieces out of the whole operation, but not before he's all like, What's up? I'm not really born of nickel I just came here for the fun, fuck. Hazaret shows up alongside Sarkin and gives the team a quest reward in the form of her spear, which Khan nabs for himself. Ob calls bullshit and disconnects from the game, and so Sarkin fills his open slot as they all return to Ravnica.
Oh, that would be a good name for a set. Chapter 42. Vraska lets Ajani put some kids in her sewer. Chapter 43. Davril Kane saves Nissa's life and Gideon punches a woman while Sorin and Nahiri have a little fight in the distance. Chapter 44. Chandra, Sahili and Lavinia go to beat up Dovin, but they've got too much skin in the game and he manages to corner all three of them, but then... Explosion sound effect dot mp3. He gets hit from behind by Chandra, but if Chandra's behind him, who's in front of him? Psych! It was Lazav the whole time, you idiot! Dovin gets so pissed that he sets himself on fire and stabs a throwing star in his eye before he TPs away and Chandra uses Siri to turn off the immortal sun. Chapter 45. Dak Faden tries to do a war. Chapter 46. Kaya, Teo, Rat, Ral and Vraska go visit Rakdos and Ral's boyfriend brings them Hakara's corpse as a gift. She wakes back up after somebody puts bells on her boobs, stabs Xava, <gasps> makes Rat sad and follows the rest of the planeswalkers to take part in what Ral calls Project Desperation. Chapter 47. Jace, Jaya, Teferi and Vivian shoot at Liliana, but Nicol Bolas wants all of her XP for himself, so he blows up the buildings they're all standing on and, now that they don't have the high ground, they all run off. Chapter 48. Liliana is in physical and emotional pain and so eats two zombies like they're Ben and Jerry's to feel better. Chapter 49. Teo watches all of the guild leaders and reps gather together as Nyssa begins magical group therapy. Kefnet tries to stop them all from accessing their repressed memories by punching Nyssa, but Teo shields them all in time for everyone to come to terms with their abandonment issues and for Niv-Mizzet to come back as the living embodiment of the guild pact itself. He flies up punches Kefnet to death and, and then sleeps. Chapter 50, Ral leaves his master plan napping as the Gatewatch all retake their oaths and his boyfriend grabs a sword and Ral considers if this would be a good time to propose. Chapter 51, Chandra and Nyssa go for a walk. That's literally what happens in this chapter. Chapter 52, Vraska, tearful, admits to Jace that she had her memories when she killed Isperia, that she had her memories when she betrayed Ral to Bolas, and he's all like, huh. Whatever, babe. And they all begin the final assault on Bolas' Citadel. Chapter 53. Chandra sets the Immortal Sun on fire, which actually turns it on despite the canon fact that it can only be activated with the sacrifice of a Planeswalker Spark, because we've only got 15 chapters left of this absolute nonsense, and R&D didn't allow for any Planeswalkers not called Gideon to make any kind of tangible sacrifice. Chapter 54. Dak gets caught by an Eternal, tries to planeswalk away, gets stopped because Chandra turned the sun back on, and gets despawned. Oh, so this is what the gay agenda is. I, I, I had been wondering. Chapter 55. Liliana sees Gideon flying at Bolas and waves to him, but forgets to decouple for Maketra, and she shoots his horse. Chapter 56. Kaya watches Gideon get shot down like a basic hoe and has a heart palpitation. Chapter 57. Jace watches Rakdos fly Gideon back up to Bolas. <laughs> and then sees that Gideon bought a replica black blade to Ravnica rather than the real one. <laughs> Chapter 58. Nicol Bolas laughs at Gideon. Chapter 59. Bolas monologues to himself about how he always knew the Black Blade would be useless against him, but just before he can wax lyrical about how Chapter 58 was kind of redundant within the grand scheme of things. <gasps> chapter 60. Liliana finally has had enough of murdering countless innocent civilians and calls Bolas a chud. He responds by setting her on fire, but then Gideon wakes up and gives her his infinite health cheat code. Bolas is strong enough at this point that he has mod powers and insta-bans Gideon from the game. Chapter 61. Gideon hangs out with the ghosts of the children he murdered. Chapter 62. Liliana watches Gideon die. Chapter 63. Chandra is angry. Chapter 64. Nicole threatens Liliana, but then Niv-Mizzet stabs him with Hazaret's spear and Bontu bites all the magic out of him. Chapter 65. Liliana watches Bolas turn to dust, lets Jace's telepathy go to voicemail, steals Bolas's gem of becoming, and then planes walks away. Chapter 66. Chandra is sad professes her crush on Gideon and her love for Nyssa. Quick turn around there, girl. And then, respectfully, sets fire to all the remaining zombies. Chapter 67. Teo somehow manages to not have a panic attack through all of this and watches everyone go home for the day. Kaya swears herself into the Gatewatch and she, Ral and Vraska are made to hunt down Liliana, Dovin and Tezzeret respectively. And then Chandra puts a leaf on Gideon's armour. Chapter 68. Turns out that Nicol Bolas isn't really dead. Ugin just told Jace to make it seem that way before kidnapping his brother for all of eternity. Chapter 69. 
Fucking nice! Bolas doesn't have a name or a cool horn orb anymore and is stuck in Ugin's yoga room for the rest of time. Ugin is now big! Huge, massive shout out to Jungle Fiverr and my wonderful patron, a certain random guy, for letting me borrow their copies of War of the Spark when I couldn't get my own. I am thinking of doing some kind of live stream where I break down the novel in a much more analytical manner, chapter by chapter, so do let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, and as always, stay spicy! <laughs>